Good evening, members of Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. How's everybody doing this evening? I hope everybody's doing great. For those who follow me here on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, those who follow my show reels on TikTok under APCS, I hope everybody is going, having a great evening. Uh, before I start the show, I want to say some prayers uh, for individuals that are, are sick. Uh, so that's how I want to start off this live feed today. Heavenly Father, at this time I would like to pray uh, for anybody that that's, has any kind of ailments or is sick. Uh, uh, praying for anybody that's sick. Uh, Sister Nellie Turner. Uh, and other family members that are that, might, that are going through something. Uh and other people within the cryptid paranormal communities that are sick. At this time, I would like to pray to, uh, for the Heavenly Father uh, to to protect these individuals from any kind of negative energies. Uh, we would like to tie by and rebuke any negative energies that might be causing them to be ill. Uh, we tie by and rebuke them in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I hope everybody is, is, is doing great this evening. How are you doing? Uh, cousin Jesus Carvajal, Sister Madeline, how you doing? Um, just saying a little prayer for, for those that are that are sick right now. Uh, you know, it's... it's you know, when I woke up this morning, I found out that Sister Nellie Turner was sick. And uh, there's been other people within the crypto community that are being hospitalized. So I'm, I'm putting everybody in prayer right now. Uh, I experienced something last night, like around, I say it was like 2.30, 3 in the morning. You know, I was I was playing, I like playing this this game on online. So I wasn't doing too well online, uh, which is like a little casino game. So it was late at night. I said, you know what, I'm going to go try my luck at the, at the game place because they have a 24-hour place where you can go and play. So it was already like, 1 30 2 30 somewhere around there in the morning so i get in my vehicle like something's telling me to stay home and then something's telling me to go so i said okay i'm gonna go maybe my luck will change you know so i went i was driving you know uh, i was driving uh probably i say it's probably like 12 blocks going to the direction where this this place is and by the light the four-way light that's this is in town right uh by the four-way light i see something it's is running on fours but it's, it looks weird and as i'm looking at it i said that's i thought it was a dog when i seen it but i said that's not no dog it was running on fours and i looked at it and i said is that a pebble but then i, I took a, a closer look and it looked too big to be to be a, 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 a pit bull was too big, but it was moving in phases. It was moving like this. It would go fast, short, stop, like a like a fast, but it was beyond fast. It was like moving in phases. So as the light the light was was green, I I, I went by the light and looked to the right to where it crossed the four way section. I looked to the right and I couldn't see nothing. So I figured what I seen was a DDN, a disembodied demonic nephilim. This is in town. So I did the sign of the cross and and I prayed because that's what I, I felt I had to do. You know, sometimes when you run into something like that, you have to pray because those things are out there just trying to find uh, someone to attach themselves to or to, that has a spiritual opening. And that's what they do, you know, and this was in town. So I think the the one that was awake when I came back home was Brother uh, Cuffington, and I was telling him what I experienced or what I witnessed. You know, uh, you know, and that's not the first time I've witnessed something like this, brothers and sisters. Uh, I used to see this kind of activity all the time in Elms Grove. I seen it on Fort Hood when I was in the military, but I believe it has to do with the area, uh, Central Texas. There's a lot of activity like that. That's I, that I wish that I could have a a recorder recording 24 hours when I capture or when I witness 
something like this. I wasn't sleepy. I wasn't tired. You know, I'm a, a night person. So I was wide awake, uh, wide awake when I witnessed this. Uh, so I did the sign of the cross because, it felt, you know, when you get that feeling, when you, you, you see something like that, you have a feeling like, like it's going to come, come at you. You know, you feel like it's going to try to, to come at you or try to find a way to, to enter your space. So I had, I did the sign of the cross and I had to pray against it because I felt that what I witnessed, this DD and it's, it's demonic, you know, and I had, I had to pray against it, you know, uh, I cannot, I did not want to believe of what I witnessed, uh, but I had to pray against it because at the same time, you know, that that's what it, it does. It, it manifests itself to look a certain way. So if you give it the belief factor, then it can attach itself to you, which is a bond you, which is a form of possession. You know, that's how they attach itself to people, you know, uh, they like attaching themselves to homeless people, uh, to people that are on the bad road, uh, alcoholics, uh, people that are on, uh, doing drugs, uh, people that uh, are, are doing wrong things. They like to attach to them, not just to them, but to anybody that might have a, spirit, a spiritual opening. It doesn't even have to do with anybody that has a, a, a problem. It could be just a, 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 a little opening that you might have because that's what they do. You know, they... They're just waiting for the right opportunity to attack. So, you know, that's why I always preach about and pray about we always have to maintain a love foundation. We can't allow negativity in our hearts in any way, shape, or form. No matter who's coming up against us in a negative way, we can allow that to affect our hearts or for us to to get upset or anger. You know, and I know it's hard because we're human and, you know, we have our emotions, but... We have to try our best not to give it that opening because those things that surface up in that nature, that's what they do. You know, they're just waiting for a spiritual opening. Maybe um, by me going over there, uh, playing the game, you know, that could be a spiritual opening. But I prayed against it and I was just there for a little bit and then I came home, you know, and I was praying all the way home because I felt I had to. You know, I didn't want nothing to follow me home. Of what I witnessed uh, to follow me to my house, so I prayed against it. See, we got a, a sister Madeline, brother Larry Joe. Oh yes, yes, brother uh, Jesus Carvajal. You know, there's there's been some strange stuff happening uh, in, in Temple, Texas. Uh, there was this, there was a restaurant, uh, but this happened two days ago. There was a restaurant. Some guy bumped into two guy and bumped into a guy accidentally while they were ordering food. The two guys that the, the, that he bumped to against, you know, it was just a a bump. Uh, for, they grabbed him on the ground and they killed him right there in the in the restaurant. And like it was a uh, a place where you order burgers and stuff like that, and they just killed him. Uh, that's the DDN right there. The DDN has those capabilities. If if peer, people or on the wrong road or has spiritual opening that they're used in that manner, right, by the DDN, uh, to cause those kind of events to happen. You you hear it all the time uh, where, you know, there's people missing in 401 cases, uh, where people are missing, and I believe the DDN have to do with that. Imagine if they can manifest and deceive somebody, uh, to tell them that they're their friend, that they're friendly with them, that they're their friend, and they put all their trust in them, thinking it's a friend, they lure them deeper into the woods, and next thing you know, they're gone. You don't hear from them no more. Imagine them getting possessed, and it's using their body for two, three days, and next thing you know, when they, they come back to when the, the they leave their body, they're too weak, because they don't have enough water in their system, enough food in their system, so they wake up and they're they wake up in a in a stage where they're very weak. They can't even move, and they don't know where they're at in the woods. They're disorientated, and they don't know how to come out of the situation in which they die. You know, 
That's all the capabilities of the DDN, the Legion, uh, Lucifer, anything anything dealing with that, the, that's what they do. You know, I believe that 100% where people disappear like this. You know, you hear it all the time when they say, the devil made me do it, or I don't, I don't remember. You know, I, I believe that the, those people, whether they were mad or whatever, whatever situation they were in, that that's the opening that he used to cause the chaos and havoc. You know, uh, and I, I've seen it happen, and I hear stories of how things happen in this nature, and I believe it has to do with them. That's how they work. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's reptilian food. You see, there's this in there's disembodied demonic nephilim, the legion, anything that's fallen, the, the one third that fell from the heavens, they dislike us because we're created under God's image and we have the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. So they're, they're, they're already being casted from heaven down. So there's no way that they're ever going to make it back into heaven because it went against God. So their fate is already sealed. So their, their main goal is try to prevent us, the, uh, God's children, the chosen ones, to make it into the kingdom of heaven. So how would they do something like that? They can use things within our government to prevent us to make it into the, to the kingdom. Uh, how are they doing things like that right now? They're trying to take Jesus out of the equation. They're trying to make things that are of Sodom and Gomorrah right. You, we know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Where it got destroyed. Well, they're making things, the abominations that were in Sodom and Gomorrah right within society. And we, we see it right now, you know, where, you know, we're born male. Some people are born female. And that's the way it should be. But our own government is creating that uh how, how can we how can i can i say it uh what's the name of the little box that you open up the box and all kinds of hell breaks loose uh pandora's box well that's why our own government and other governments are creating because they're, they're trying to take away jesus jesus christ out of the picture so everything that's surfacing up right now you know when the pit they're saying that the veil is being lifted you know i believe the veil's been lifted for a long time ago from a for a very long time, for those that have the spiritual gift of the sermon, which I've been able to see what's within the veil for a very long time. But now society is really going overboard and trying to make wrong right in which that's giving this unseen forces an advantage over mankind. You know, uh, for those that are, are being deceived and being being tricked, you know, by our government. There's also also false preachers that what they do, they're only doing it. They might know the the Bible back and forth, but they're just doing it for the tithe, for the money. Uh, and which we know a lot of those those false prophets that are in the nature, they do it for the money. You know, I, I don't think anybody has to preach. They talk about God or about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and that's for money, you know, because God has already done enough for us, Jesus Christ, uh, when he died on the cross for us because it had to happen that way. Uh, I don't need, uh, I don't need to ask nobody for, for any kind of money. You know, I do it because uh, I believe in him. And I just uh, do the works that I do because he allows me to do it. Any spiritual gifts that I have is because of, of Jesus Christ, because of him. So that's why I do the spiritual works. Let me see we got. Yes. Uh, yes, Sister Adon, uh, no dancing tonight. Uh, we're just here relaxing. Uh, sometimes you have to take a break from things, you know get out of the scenery i haven't gone dancing in a while uh, but they really haven't been bringing any bands they did have a band last week but we were busy so i haven't gone out uh i haven't been feeling well but i'm doing okay uh you know when 
when you're going through so many things spiritually, sometimes you have to take a break from the path that you're on, you know. It's kind of like uh, when that time comes, how many people are going to be busy doing other things. When that day comes that Jesus Christ is going to take his people, what are people going to be doing at that day or that time? I know that he shows us things in advance. So sometimes we have to follow our heart, follow our spirit of what, what we want to be doing daily, you know, uh, or follow your heart. Is, is that a good good thing to go out? Is it not a good thing to go out? I'm just taking a break, you know, from, from that. But yeah, I, do, I, love, I love to dance, but I love Jesus Christ too. Uh, and sometimes I have to be obedient. And, if, you know, if it tells me to take breaks from what I'm doing, uh, having a good time, I'll take a break, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I love to dance. But when it comes to the spiritual talk or, or making videos like this, uh, the Heavenly Father takes place first. You know, any, anything I do is because of Him. But, yes, you know, you see, those are the theories that people don't want to talk about that, that people want to take out of context. That they don't want to talk about what the real threat is here that's happening amongst us and it's unseen. Uh, the real threat is, is demonic beings, which, you know, I call them the disembodied demonic Nephilim. They can call, be called the Dijen somewhere else. They can be called the Legion, the Herd, and of course, you know, uh, the Fallen Angels, the Watchers, Lucifer. That's what they do. They run havoc, chaos. You see it happen in public, man, like in football games, baseball games, where everybody could be having a good time. Next thing you know, they're fighting, you know. Uh, could be at a, at a bar, at a parade, you know, everybody having a good time. Next thing you know, people are fighting because of the spiritual openings. That's what they use. It's, it's spiritual openings to attack. To attack an individual. Oh yeah. That's why I've been taking a break. Sister Madeline. Uh, I've been taking a break. Because uh, of what I, uh, what I. What happened to me. When I went out there to investigate. About two weeks ago. Where I was walking. And it felt like somebody jumped on my shoulders. And tried to drag me down. But uh, I maintained to stand up. But I felt like a, a strain on my lower back. So that was telling me to, I believe I, I say I type by the rebuke of Jesus Christ's name when I was in the wall line. So I managed to get out of there and I kept on praying within myself to get out of the area, you know, to make it home safely. But for about a week, a week and a half, I have been feeling pain on my left, left side ever since I felt that, that the heaviness fall upon my, they try to weigh me down. So I took a break and, you know, I'm healed. I worked out a little bit this week uh, and I've recuperated, you know, it's kind of like it didn't want to drain my energy. It want to literally uh, make me, how should I say, take me out, like as in keep me there in the woods, you know, like you try to weigh me down, like try to drop me in that manner. Luckily, I was prepared spiritually when I was there and I was able to pray to get out of the situation, you know, uh, you could say I have been kind of fasting and I've been staying away. Like I hadn't been really going out dancing. So I've been staying away from beer, from any kind of alcohol, you know, I really don't drink. Uh, so if I drink one drink, you know, that's a lot, but I'm not even supposed to be drinking. Uh, but I've been staying away from that. Uh, but they tried to, to keep me in that area where they try to drop me. But I was able to come out of there safely. Um, yeah, there's a lot of spiritual attacks in the nature of what I felt two weeks ago. And what I'm witnessing now, that they're surfacing up now within the city. You know, they're literally running uh, uh, havoc in the cities. No different when I witnessed them uh, running. And, and uh, you could say, you know, when you talk about Legion as an army, they're, they're running in, in a platoon. They're running in a, a platoon like of 12 people or 12 demonic beings or 14 demonic beings uh, uh, moving in, in flanks like, uh, or should I say, 
with 10 meter intervals in between them so they're covering a, a lot of a lot of space uh, but what they what they do is they attack spiritually the, they attack spiritually if one of them could drop one then the other ones attack also so that's what they do that's what we have to be spiritually prepared you know uh, that's what I'm trying to bring the awareness of we have to be ready at all times because they can attack at any given time just like last night you know it's like it wanted me to to give it power and believe I didn't want to believe on what I was seeing but I witnessed it so I, I just prayed against it because I wasn't going to give it the spiritual opening for it to attack me oh yeah cousin I was the, the I was I was surrounded that day in the woods uh and and you know what's what's messed up there's a lot of things happening like from that day that I got surrounded in the woods that I got dropped uh the uh the the following day of uh, of that day a lady or it might have been that evening and a lady walked in the middle of the highway and got hit and got killed just walked in the middle of a highway uh, of I-35 you know walked you know who's gonna just walk in the middle of the whole highway trying to cross from one side of the highway to the other side of the highway you know nobody's gonna do that in their in the right state of mind you know uh not not in that manner you know you got the the bridges across over overhead but not to cross in the interstate itself now i believe that this individual was possessed that the the ddn of the demons made her do that you know but she's not here no more and, and i believe uh, they're doing that a lot to a lot of people that have spiritual openings and of course, the media is, is is doesn't want me to say these things that I'm saying right now because they're affiliated, just like the people are in higher power. They're trying to keep Jesus Christ out of the picture. They know what I'm talking about is real because they're affiliated with them, right? So they don't want me to boot them on a spiritual blast, and they want to continue their agenda. Of trying to get people to believe in other things besides Jesus Christ and that's their agenda and there's people I don't blame the people it's just the things that are bonded these individuals or the ones that's behind it you know there's a lot of people you know there's some people that are affiliated because they choose that path and then of course you got some that are being bonded so we run, we've I know we've all run into somebody some kind of way, shape, or form that's been that has a negative attachment uh, on them. You know, it's uh, if you're you're spiritually blessed with the spiritual gifts of discernment, you know uh, what's in front of you because uh, the heavenly Father is going to show you the enemy. And sometimes the enemy is not the individual that's in front of you; it's what's within the individual. Uh, through the spiritual gifts of discernment, you're able to see what's within that individual. In which you go into into prayer and you pray against them, you know, a pray against uh, whatever's bonding them, you know. Uh, I might have to go into prayer, uh, go help somebody that that, that I helped out already. If they're going through an, uh, something again, so I might have to go help them out again. I, I don't know when, but I need to talk to my wife about this individual that I need to help out spiritually because he's going through a lot of things now again you know sometimes brothers and sisters uh, I can do spiritual work to help somebody out but if they leave themselves a spiritual opening whatever was there that I, I cast out can always come back if they go back on the wrong path it'll come back and, and attack them or again uh, and bond them and it won't come by itself it'll come in more because that's no that's normally what happens you know so uh you know i have a lot of works to do spiritual works to do uh but that's what happens you know when when you do the, the spiritual works uh it's kind of like the this things that are unseen they're not gonna they don't want to give up on something that They've put, been putting in the work. They have bonded. They're not going to give up on it. They're going to try to continue to keep them bonded. So, out of the kindness and goodness of my heart, 
it's up to me to help out those individuals that are being bonded that if I can uh, cast out the unclean spirit, the unseen forces that are upon the individual, you know, that's what I do. Uh, those are the works that I do. When people ask me, how come in your pictures where you're always seeing this dogman in there, this, this Bigfoots and dogmans in your pictures, and it's like, and I tell them, it's, it's because of the works that I do, because of who I am as an individual, that I place Jesus Christ first, that I'm a Tina Love Foundation. They appear because they know what I'm capable of doing spiritually. They know the works that I do. So they appear because they want to stop me from doing those spiritual works. That's what people don't understand. Is they appear because they want to stop me from doing the works that I do. Uh, for somebody that they already have bonded, uh, they're going to continue to think that everything's okay, even though they got them bonded, because that's what they do. So when they come to listen to somebody like me, they might not understand where I'm coming from. It's because their senses are being blocked, right? Their spiritual senses are being blocked. So they have no understanding or knowledge of what I'm saying spiritually. But through Jesus Christ with the Love Foundation and the spiritual gift of the sermon, there's always a way to go in, into the, how should I say, in spiritually to fight spiritually. Because somewhere within what I, of what I say or speak, there's a spiritual opening for me to enter this, the space of where they're being bonded to be able to break them free from the bondage. By tie binding and rebuking anything that's negative, anything that's unholy, anything that's unclean, off of them. So they can come to reality and they can, they're able to hear momentarily, see momentarily. I'm talking about spiritually, right? And that's why I come in and I give them the spiritual advice. You know, sometimes I have to repeat myself numerous times of what I'm saying in order for them to understand. It's kind of like repeat myself 10, 20 times just so they can remember about saying like, for example, I tie bind you and I tie bind and rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. Or... Say it several times so they can say, I take authority over you in Jesus Christ's name. You're not welcome here. You have to repeat yourself numerous times in order to get through spiritually. But that's what I do, brothers and sisters. Uh, turn on some of this uh, Palo Santo and a stick. I hope everybody's great, having a great evening. Uh, tomorrow, I will be doing a, a podcast, uh, part two uh, of a podcast tomorrow that I had done. I had done a part one, but we're doing a part two tomorrow around 1.30 uh, in the afternoon. So that's why I'm making this video here right now. I know uh, some people don't understand uh, where I'm coming from spiritually. But there's many that do understand because they've been through something, they've witnessed something, they experienced something, they know somebody that is going through something. So they know exactly what I'm talking about. And of course, there's some that are scared of, of going in depth like death. Going in, in, in depth uh, spiritually, they're afraid to open up spiritually. But it's like this. Um... Uh, I, I, I'll put it. I'll put it on uh, tomorrow. Of, uh, who it is? Uh, I already did one podcast with him. It's a part two uh, tomorrow, but it's going to be one of those podcasts where you hear through the through the radio. Like uh, uh, I'll, let, I'll I'll put the the link on tomorrow of where, what time I'm going to do it because normally we do it live through the phone or whatever you know and when we talk and stuff like that yeah through earbuds uh i don't know he's got a he's got some youtube channels he's he's got some shows that he's done and stuff like that uh, i can't remember the top uh the, his name on top of my head right now no, it's just like uh, I've had, I've been, you know, when you when you go through things spiritually, you just got 
so much things on your mind that you don't know. When I talk and I, I speak here, I'm letting things out of what's within me because sometimes when you don't let things out that are happening around you, it, it becomes heavy on you. So you got to let it out. You know, you got to speak about it. Can't be afraid to speak about what you're going through. You know, it'll make you feel better when you speak about it instead of keeping it in within yourself. Because you keep it within yourself, within yourself, nobody's going to know what you're going through. And then, uh, of course, when you, you, you're sharing it with people, it's because sharing is caring. You know, you're letting people know what you're going through. And maybe uh, those people might be going through something what you might be going through. So it, it's relatable that they'll understand where you're coming from. Can't keep it in within yourself. I know when I grew up, uh, my parents didn't want me to say anything in front of anybody. They wanted to make, keep me isolated from saying anything to anybody, you know, and I don't think that was right, you know, because we're all individuals. Yeah, I understand I was, I was young or whatever, but when you witness things that are, you know, ever since I was a kid, I've been witnessing things. I was always told not to say anything to anybody of what I'm seeing. I'm what I'm hearing spiritually, you know, I was told not to say nothing to nobody, but that's been my calling, you know, all my life. Uh, I remember if I try to say something, I would get disciplined, you know. Uh, why would I get dis disciplined, you know? That's kind of like a form of bondage, right? When you're not allowed to say anything, you're not allowed to do anything, even though you're winning it, witnessing something, then what do you think there will be? Some kind of bondage, you know, they say that this unseen forces, who do they attack first is the, the head of the household, the people who are in charge, so our parents can be bonded, you know, so if our parents are being bonded, then these unseen forces are allowed to run chaos and havoc within the family because the people in charge are being bonded. So think about that one. For those that grew up with... Uh, with tough love, they grew up with tough love, you know, what made you, what made you be who you are as an individual, was it the tough love, was it what was told to you, what made you become who you are, you know, was it some kind of form of bondage, there's got to be negative seeds that are planted somewhere that makes you to become that way, I don't, I don't believe that anybody is born evil in this world. Not not one bit at all. It's the things that happen when you're born, the negative seeds that are planted that might cause you to think that way. But you're not necessarily evil. It's the things that you go through in life that make you who you are, to make you feel a certain way. And sometimes you don't know how to handle it but the only thing you know how to handle is what was shown to you. So, but once you get, get to know Jesus Christ, then you know that when you start feeling love, a, a, the love foundation, when you start seeing, uh, He blesses you with the spiritual gift of the sermon because, by forgiving, and He blesses you with these things, then you know that there is a higher power than anything any negative seeds that was planted, that anything that was shown to you that was not good, that, uh, anything of anybody try to say you can do this, it could do that, or try to bond you in some kind of way, shape, or form, you're going to notice the love, the Heavenly Love Foundation is a lot greater than that. So you're going to want to be where, where you feel, where your heart feels good, where you, your your how your how uh, your heart feels like it's radiated out in the love that's within you. Is coming out and touching everybody around you spiritually, right? Affecting people in a positive way. That's what Jesus Christ does. He, he, he affects people in a positive way. Through blessings, through healings, uh, uh, through miracle works. But the, number, the most important one is through love, you know, by love, loving his children, you know. That's how it affects us in a positive way. Uh, yeah, I, I believe uh, I have put a post. Uh, I'll put the post of 
I think his name is David. Uh, I can't remember his last name right now. Like I said, got so many things in my mind. But I, I'm doing the podcast tomorrow at 1.30 in the afternoon, part two. Uh, he contacted me uh, today, and I told him that I would do it tomorrow. So that's on the agenda uh, for tomorrow. Yeah, brother, uh, cousin Jesus Carvajal, I was being over home big time. There was, you know how much noises were out there that day that I went out there when they tried to drop me down? There was noises all around me, man. You could hear lots of birds chirping. There was a lot of birds chirping, and they were all around me, you know, like different sounds. Uh, all I can say to y'all, brothers and sisters, if you ever decide to go investigate make sure you're spiritually prepared that you're ready for what's at hand wherever you go to and investigate because you don't know what you're going to run into spiritually or you know when people will say i'm going to go look for bigfoot you don't know what you're going to run into spiritually or you're going to look for a, a dog man you know what you're going to run to spiritually at the same time, you don't know what you're going to run into physically. Physically, there could, there's other animals. I found out there was a there was cows being killed here in Central Texas. They were finding them with pieces of meat missing and stuff like that. Goats. They found out it was a mountain lion. A mountain lion was killing the livestock in, Tem in Temple, Texas. I believe they 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 killed that mountain lion. There was a mountain lion killing cattle. Here in in, uh, in, the, in the local area, Central Texas, a mountain, a mountain lion was killing the livestock. That's crazy, right? So you don't know what you're going to run into. You know, this is what the mountain lions do. When they kill, kill something, they'll, they'll take the, their meat and they'll drag it to the top of a tree. So we hear, we've heard many stories where they say they found a, a, a dead person on top of a tree. Well, that's that's what a, a lion or any kind of a cat would do. Big cats. They'll, they'll grab the whatever they killed and drag it up to higher ground to keep uh, the other animals away from them. That's what they do. Uh, but that's what they found out because there was a lot of uh, a cattle <laughs> getting killed here in Central Texas. Then they found out it was a mountain lion. I know there's mountain lions here because, and cougars, because of Fort Hood, they have them there. When I would be training, I would always run into them, whether I was going down ranges, where I was training out there in the woods in the, at nighttime and daytime, I was always running into the mountain lion, to the cougars out there. So I know they exist, just like they exist, uh, wild cats exist also. Uh, but uh, yes. That's what they found out. What was killing the livestock in this area was a mountain lion. But, uh, like I said, you got to be prepared at all times. I go in there without without any weapons, and maybe maybe I should carry a weapon with me. Um, one uh, next time I go out there, you know. Uh, but I I rather when I go out there, I take no weapons. Uh, for the simple reason is this, I'm going to tell you right now, straight up, I take no weapons because if it's something that's uh, demonic, did somebody demand an Ephilim, the Legion or whatever, I don't, if I get used as a vessel, if, if, I, if I have a spiritual opening or the final way in, I don't want to be held responsible or if I have a weapon, that something's going to enter my body and I'm not going to hurt anybody. That's why I don't carry a weapon. I don't carry a weapon with me. Because of that purpose. You know, uh, that, that they find a, a spiritual way in. And next thing you know, things are going to happen. I come back to reality and, then, and I'm going to be saying, I don't know what happened. But that's why I go in there prepared I, I prepare myself before, if I have to tie by and rebuke during, and then I pray afterwards. You know, this is, 
spiritual war is is a real deal just like regular war spiritual war is very real you know uh just like in regular war people die in spiritual war people die also uh because the sensing forces they're collecting souls they they take out as many people as possible so they won't ever make it into the kingdom of heaven you know how do they uh they're doing that but possessing people but bonding them making them jump off of bridges making them walk into the middle of the highway uh if they have a weapon they use their own weapon against them they get in the vehicle they go get get in a car wreck that's what they do you know if a person has a spiritual opening they're going to utilize that opening and they don't want to lose that that soul right so they're going to try to take out the, the the body so they can collect that soul that's what they do and sometimes the easiest way for them to do that is if people do it out of their own will you know sometimes their own will is that a, a lot of people do not a lot of people do not believe the opening they have is uh, that they do not believe in Jesus Christ so that's a, a an opening they can use to attack somebody to be able to accomplish is 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 task I'm just here sharing with you all about we have to be spiritually prepared you know at all times I know sometimes it sounds like a broken record brothers and sisters but the same way as I would train that I say and I speak to y'all right now that might sound like a broken record I used to train my soldiers the same way uh, tell them the same things over and over that would sound like a broken record that is repeating itself but what is actually doing is training the soldier which I consider my brothers and sisters we're spiritual soldiers we're spiritual soldiers and we all have a mission everybody that, that views these videos by now they're awakened I know they're awakened so we have to be obedient what the Heavenly Father tells us to do so we have to be ready at all times when I was sounds like a bro broken record when I say I was Montana Love Foundation forgive daily forgiveness is part of love <laughs> I tie by uh, if something comes at you in a negative way say I tie by and rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name what, what am I doing in all the plays in Jesus Christ first right because everything we do is through Jesus Christ but that's what we got to do Yeah, and I, and I, I wouldn't want to place nobody in danger when I go into areas, so that's why I go by myself. Uh, I already know what's out there. Uh, my main goal, what I was trying to do, is get the spiritual evidence to be able to capture on video, so I can make the show reels and I can and, can, and I can get the uh, photos, so people can witness what I see, you know, within the videos or what I see, you know sometimes out of spirit uh spiritual eye you know uh, what i see you know and if if something that i've witnessed then i'll place it there so people can witness it for those who have the the spiritual gifts of discernment they're able to witness what's there yeah i'm thinking that the power plant that's nearby there might have caused the, all that activity to surface up that way there that they might be using the energy of the uh, the power plant that's out there of electricity I believe that they, they used that that day to to show themselves or manifest themselves using that energy yeah there's a lot of activity there cousin in that area there's times where I could hear somebody walking right beside me whispering in my ear uh, and they're trying to say something sometimes I hear a woman's voice but that's what they do they, they try to trick you sometimes you can hear a child's voice uh, so they mimic they like to mimic voices or they they talk in different dialects sometimes they'll make whistling sounds coughing sounds uh, but they like to whisper a lot or they move they'll they'll say sometimes they'll, they'll appear and disappear right beside you you're able to see something by the time you look it's already gone 
because it coming in in and out of reality. So when they do that, they're manifesting uh, into a form, but they're not showing the true true identity. But then, of course, I got the short reels where I capture them in beastly form coming at me, directly at me, full force, you know. And they're not coming at me to say hi to me. They're not coming at me in that way uh, to be friendly to me. They're coming at me because they're trying to attack spiritually. Uh, but that's why I place all the evidence out there. So people can understand that there's a lot more things happening than ban a person in costume. You know, I've seen so many videos, uh, brothers and sisters, that I'm not, I don't even watch uh, YouTube that much no more or like a TikTok because the videos of this, these people in costume, guys, come on. People in costume pretending to be Bigfoots or Dogman. You could literally tell it's a baggy costume and people in costume. The way they're moving, they're moving like human beings in a costume. Uh, it's, it's crazy, you know, how... But they're doing it for the views. They pretend to be a Bigfoot or Dogman for the views. Which is not real when it's a hoax. When people ask me, what do you think about this kind of, this video? I'll tell them straight up, that's a person in costume, you could tell. Uh, I think there was one where a person was in a costume in a swamp, and I was like, the, the person's costume is getting wet, <laughs> you know? I don't know. And, 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 you know, when people are recording it and they're looking at it, you figure if you're seeing something that's like a werewolf, or, or a real beastly animal that they're going to take up running or they're going to be scared but no they're, they're enough there to record just a little bit out of it but the, you can tell it's a person in costume because of the way they're moving they're not moving like an animal they're moving like a like a person in costume a ddn is not going to manifest to look like a person in costume as you can see on my videos a ddn looks something beastly that you see, you can literally see it's basically appearance, it's basically a man manifestation. You know, so that's the difference between what I cash on video to compare to what people are trying to put out there to say it's a real big for a real dogma, which is a person in costume. It's a big difference. But anyways, I don't want to keep you all too long, uh, but I will post the link of what I'm going to do live. I think we do a lot. I do the live with them, and then the following day, he puts out the material or something like that. He'll pull out the 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 video. I just want to say thank you all for tuning in tonight. It was just a. I don't know how long I've been on live, but I just want to say thank you, and uh, I'm going to do continuous prayers for everybody that's, that's feeling a certain way. Um, I know I ran into some other things. Uh, yesterday that didn't make no sense when I was getting my hair cut. You know, there was a lot of things that were happening spiritually, you know, like, for example, I was getting my hair cut and I was going to leave. I left the door. Uh, I went out out of the barbershop and I forgot I had my my hoodie and my cap hanging on the thing. So when I went there and grabbed it, there was this old man sitting down and he said, you're a veteran? I said, yes, sir. And he had what seemed to be a Vietnam cap. And uh, he said that, or I don't know if it was a Vietnam cap, but he said he was in, he went to, what was the name of that thing that happened in 82? Where the children were being kidnapped. And it said he, he said he was part of that deployment or those people that went to go rescue the children. I just can't remember where it was at that it happened. But he said uh, the name of it. He said that uh, he was coming down uh, on a parachute. He was with an in uh, infantry or something like that. That he got shot down. They shot him. And so they shot him. And, you know, he's kind of messed up. And he was telling me he was part of that, uh, I should have said, that mission of rescuing the children. Yeah, yeah, Grenada. Grenada, there you go. He was, he was part of that, you know. And he said that he got his shot. So he's got a lot of problems now. And he, this happened in 82. And he was telling me he was part of that, that he was there. 
And then uh, he asked me what my name was, and I told him my name is, my friends call me Abe, and that, you know, my real name is Abram. Then he looked at me, and guess what he said, cousin Jesse? You're not gonna think, you're not gonna believe this, and which it makes me makes me gives me a question mark. And this is how the Diddy at work. He said his name was Joaquin, and I looked at him, and I said, "Well, my father's name is Joaquin, and my brother's name is Joaquin." I said, and that's short for Jack. And he's just looking at me, and he's smiling. He's smiling, brother. He's smiling. So that's telling me, he didn't say nothing after that. And I looked at him, and that's telling me, this one was telling me, brothers and sisters, this, that's, that's how spiritual battles happen sometimes. That's telling me that whatever was causing this man's ailment, whatever was within him, or even if he if he really was, he never said, it, he said his name, but if he was really a person or a, a DDN, the way he was acting, it's kind of like he couldn't stand still, and it's kind of like his face kept on moving a certain way. DDN can manifest for a short period of times to look at somebody, or they can, uh, they can enter somebody momentarily to send a message. And I believe the message was sent to me <laughs> when they said my father's name or my brother's name. You know, uh, I don't think that's coincidental. And I knew that he was sending me a message through the man because he was smiling at me. So I was ready to fight spiritually, but I just looked at him and I said, you have a blessed day, sir. And I grabbed my stuff, turned around and walked away. But yeah, there's been a lot of strange activity happening. But they know, they know, they know. They'll, they'll send a message in that nature, something that only you know, just to get the, the point across to you of what's in front of you. You know, uh, through spiritual law, they have to identify themselves, even if they have to use a name of one of your loved ones. They, they're not going to say their, their, their true name, because if they're, they're the person they're, they're using are, is being bonded, but they're going to send a message through them. You know, that's why I knew what I was dealing with. But, you know, I just prayed on the way home. And all these things started happening. Like, what, the incident happened last night. But, but I'm okay. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in. God bless every, every single one of y'all. Uh, thank you, Cousin Jesus Carvajal, uh, Sister Madeline, Sister Dawn, Brother Larry Joe Fisher, Sister Holly, uh, Marshy. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless every single one of you and your families. And I will put the, the link of the podcast I'm doing to t tomorrow. So whenever he does uh, finish, it, finish it up, you are able to listen to it. Thank you all. God bless you. You have a beautiful, blessed evening. Peace.